some of the things I want us to talk about include, okay, so the world of work, because I believe that whether you form your own organization or you're employed, you still have to operate within the world of work. So I want us to look at what are some of the factors that are impacting the world of work. And I, can, I know quite a number of you here, I believe you are working. Uh, I'm told we should be looking at the millennials, but I will try and um, see how we can address issues that pertain to everyone that is here, that they can also share with other people. But we'll look at some of the, what we call the mega trends, or the big issues that are affecting and shaping the world of work. We'll look at some of those. Then we'll go into, with these things that are impacting and shaping the world of work, what are organizations doing today and into the future? Say in the next 10 years, what are the likely skills they'll be looking for in the people? And then, because I was asked to look at millennials, I also put down some of the preferences or environment that millennials will love to work and how organizations are preparing for employing such people to ensure that when they come in, they are comfortable and they are able to enjoy their work and be able to produce or work to the extent that the employer makes their profits and revenue. We'll look at that. And then PwC, we do a lot of work when it comes to um, future of work. We have a project where we do research across the world. I'll pick some thoughts of some employers, some CEOs, some workers, as what they are thinking when it comes to what we should be telling people about the future of work. Just a few of those. Are we together? Great. I mentioned that I've been asked to look at, um, we are all sweating, sorry look at millennia, just to look at um, how professional people managers or HR researchers or OD people have grouped us as human beings in terms of when we were born and how we are called. Of course, one category of people are the millennials. And they are the people that um, were born between 1980 and 95. Some literature say 96. Some are actually saying between 1979 to 2001. The millennials, the others, how they are grouped. And those who are born after that period, whether you take the 95 group or 2001 group, post the millennials, we call them the I generation. Internet, of course, that is why the I, or the Generation Z, or Z. These are the very recent people. Either you were born in 96 upward, or 2001 upward, based on whose literature you are looking at. And proud to them, the millennials, who are also called the Generation Y. We had what we call the Generation X, I'm looking at the cohorts or how employees, if you like, are grouped per different literature. So the Generation X are the people born between 65 and 79 or 80, depending on which of the <coughs> literature you are looking at. They are what we call the Generation X. I'm proud to that a lot of research is done I don't know where you fall if you're asking yourself. And as you can see, I am very, very old. So, so between or prior to 65, they are called the baby boomers. And most of this research is linked to the world war before, post, 10 years after, and all of that. And this is just to, the reason these are done is because 
people managers and researchers believe that depending on when you were born relative to the war, you have certain expectations when it comes to work. You have certain expectations. You would prefer certain environment when it comes to work. You would um, prefer the tools, certain tools to others. Of course, the I generation, they're the internet people, so they want to work everywhere they are. While they are working, they are using their phones. And, and as much as sometimes you think that it's been disruptive, if you give them work, they're able to multitask and still give you. But if you give to somebody born, if you, um, say a generation X person, will struggle to combine effectively the phone, the WhatsApp, the Hangout, and all of that with the work to deliver for you. So we believe that depending on what you came to meet, you have certain preferences to work, certain ways of working, certain working environment. That is important because depending on who you are and what you prefer in terms of working, you'll be effective or you wouldn't be effective. Depending on how your employers design their work environment. Are we together? Great. So that is just about the cohorts of classifications. So, and I mentioned that there are a lot of things happening that are impacting the world of work. We have done some research at PwC, and some other researchers have done. And we consider this as the mega trends. Mega trends. And we classify them in five. What are those five occurrences? events across the world that are impacting the world of work. Of course, technology is one. Technology has so much impact on how work is designed, how the hours of work is designed, how work is delivered in terms of reporting, how people are recruited, how they are deployed. Technology has so much impact on that. Of course, the survival of specific skills also depends on the available technology. Today, if we are, we are recruiting and you have knowledge and ability to use old, good old days typewriter, and somebody can do computers, Today, nobody is actually looking for people using typewriters. We can utilize your skills in terms of speed of typing to deliver the work. But are we going to give you typewriter? Of course not. Because there are, we have moved on. If the work you do is to be able to do quantitative analysis for us, because you are so super with Excel, or you are so good with numbers. Now, there are a lot of technology softwares that can do that for us. Those days when we were doing our first degree, your a bit old, never mind. In not too long ago, 99 thereabouts, your computer is as big as. So normally we'll go to as a place at Osu where they were selling different types of computers. We go and buy it, and then we put it in the boot of the car and bring it to campus. Today, as small as a phone, you can do whatever you want. So there are technologies that are making certain skills redundant, extinct. And once we are people learning and working to enter the place of work or employ people, we should know what impact technology is having on work. Are we together? The next item on the bill that is impacting so much on the world of work is what we call demographic changes. Demographic changes. Let me read what is here. We are saying that the pace of change is varying substantially across 
different regions. The fastest growing <coughs> continent now is Africa. We are growing so fast. And it has positive size. It is said that by 2050, the average, every person you meet in Japan, the average worker will be 1.5. By Nigeria, there will be how many? 23. There will be 23 workers in Nigeria compared to 1.5 in Japan. So what are we saying? There will be so many people in Africa that with the right environment, we'll be able to produce and sustain ourselves compared to places where they have even decided not to give birth, or they are giving birth to one. And I think we are sort of moving to that environment, but they all have implications for work. So leadership will have to take account of that. Government will have to take account of those. If you have so many people to recruit, in terms of recruitment cost, once they have the skills, it works to the advantage of the employer. Are we together? We also expect that with the right training, we have diversified skills that we can get from the population to do what we must do. So we are saying that the changing demographics have a lot of impacts and implications for work. And it said that Africa will add about 850 million new workers to the workforce by 2050. 850 million of workers we are going to add. What implication does that have for you as a job seeker, you as a potential employer, are you together? And these we must take account of. And the other thing that is impacting the world of work is climate change and resource scarcity. Climate change. All the, the the sea level rising, the erratic rain patterns, the weather, the environment. These all are having an impact on the skill that will be important in the future. Sometimes back, if you are into bola, there's no much focus on you. But now, it's a lot of money and will require skills, expertise to be able to manage our environment. That is why it becomes so important that if I'm going to learn, if I'm selecting my courses, I should know what is impacting the world of work. And for that matter, what sort of skills I must build in order to be employable. And if I'm going to be an employer, what should I be looking out for in the people that I'm going to employ? So it works both ways. So the climate change and resource scarcity is having an impact. It is expected that as population increases, the capacity of or the volume of water that we require would increase. But actually, because of the changes, there's going to be less water. The environment, and that has impact on the, our survival. It has impact on what skills can I build so that if there's a need for recycling, processing, refinement of used water, and they are looking for environmentally, they are looking for specialists, I can be prepared for that. It has implications for skills. Rapid urbanization. When we're young, those days, we have few people from our villages in the big cities. 
But now there's so much movement because as countries, we haven't taken good care of planning, migration, and all of that. So everybody has to come to Accra, has to go to Kumasi, Takradi, Cape Coast to get most of what we need. And the movement of people have impact on jobs, availability. That's impact of managing the space. We are saying these we must know as either employers, trainers, or people that are yet to make our career decisions. And then shift in the economic powers. It is anticipated that in the years to come, actually, we know that China has more or less overtaken who? USA. And they are fighting. And that has implication for work. That has implication for what happens around us. And we are saying that India will come up by 2030 to be the second. And our own Africa and Ghana, what are we doing about that? <laughs> you see, what are we doing about that? And it's very important. Let me just read here. Projection from the world in 2015 is that India could overtake the U.S. as the world's second largest economy by 2050, by GDP, and should be the third largest economy very soon, by 2030. And we, I just talked about the trade war, China and USA. How am I talking about this? We are saying that these movements, because the more power and money you have, actually it boils down to purchasing power. If we are able to turn around our resources, and we are able to buy, and then we will be able to train our people well and take care of our people well. The greatest buyers with right and prudent management should be able to take care of their people. And we are saying that Africa is going to have a lot in terms of the numbers. What are we doing as leaders to also improve and enhance our economic powers? So those are the things that are impacting the world of work. We call them the five mega trends. And so what are employers, how are employers responding to this? If these changes are happening, how are employers responding? And what sort of people are they looking for? I mentioned that some skills were extinct. But then, what are we looking for? Top line, one thing I can say is that there's a movement from the hard skills to the soft skills because of the availability of various technology to help us do work. So what is becoming more important is the human skills than your mathematics, your engineering, and all of that. We are introducing robots, but robots will have to be managed by what? Human beings. The fewer the people we have in the work environment, the critical it becomes for those few people to have good relations. Are we together? So if you are the one who is managing, we have so many robots around. There are five people who are managing them. Those five people cannot have the fun they need with the robots. So the people, the fewer people that are there must have ability to relate well. Are we together? Because we spend, say, five, eight to five at the office. If we are few, then we must endeavor to have good relations with those few people. But if we are many, you don't like me, I can move to the next person. She doesn't like me, I can move to the next person. But if we are few, we are constrained. That is why we spend most of our time. So now, employers are looking for people to have the right human relations. One of the top skills 
because of the constant change in the environment. It's, it's adaptability. People who can constantly adapt to the changes in the work environment. Flexibility in the work environment. So that when because of new technology, we can utilize to improve our uh, efficiency in our production. When I bring it, or the employer brings it, we should have people who can quickly learn that technology and use it to improve production. So there's so much focus now so that when we are recruiting, we prefer to have smart, creative, emotionally intelligent individual to somebody who is a stack engineer without manners because we can actually produce the engineering skills by training. It's quite difficult to train from the human and the soft skills. Not to train, but to have the right impact when you are training people on the soft skills area. So, so much emphasis on adaptability, so much emphasis on trainability, so much emphasis on propensity to change. So that when all the changes are happening, people can learn, relearn, learn, just to ensure that they survive, they improve production, and enjoy the workplace. If you are in a work environment now, you don't have that ability to learn so quickly. You'll be so frustrated. Because every day, there's a change. So there's so much emphasis on adaptability. Another skill which is very important now, I mentioned, is emotional intelligence. I'm sure some of us are familiar with that. Are we? So, it just has the IQ. We also have EQ, emotional coefficient. We are looking for people who would be able to, before they speak, they would have gauged the impact of what they are going to say on the other person. You don't just say what you feel like saying. That is a mark of an emotionally intelligent person. That person who is able to control his emotions. That person who is self-aware. Because the environment is turning so techy, we want people who are self-aware and pay attention to the environment. And because there is so much diversity, if you're not a type who understand other people, we have African, um, a British, an American, or we are all working in the same office. We should be able to understand the other person, be empathic, put yourself in the other person's shoe, so that we can come together and work to achieve the right aims. So emotional intelligence is one of the things that employers are looking for. I said it's difficult to build these soft skills, but it is possible to build them. Human beings can learn anything once we, we put up ourselves and make our mind to it. What other skills are there? Networking. You see, who you know is important, but more important is who knows you. When the decisions are being made, we all know the president. We all know the, the vice president. I know him. OK? But if he doesn't know me, he can take the decision in a way that might not necessarily favor me. I'm into consulting. And a lot of things that we do, you should be able to know what is happening well before it is in the public domain and be able to support people from behind, organizations from behind. So it's important that as entrants into the work environment, we are able to strike the acquaintances, build the relationship, maintain those relationships, and utilize them to our advantage. It's becoming so important that 
how we do it, right? That we all build that skill. Networking skills is very important. Of course, innovation, creativity, ability to imagine the possible. They are all very key now when employers are looking for people to employ. Problem solving. PwC always say that we want to build trust in the society and solve important social problems. Okay? There's so much problems around the world now. And those who are able to anticipate and solve those problems are the people that employers will be more interested in. Are we together? So it becomes so important that we build skills in that area. Communication. Can't overemphasize it. Robots will come. Technology will come. But the interpersonal face-to-face -to -face touch is still very important. Because there is diversity, the office is so diversified with different people, orientations, must be able to communicate to all these people. If you are a Generation X person, and the person is an I Generation person, you should be able to communicate because the team that would deliver in the office would include all. Now there is so much emphasis in team approach to delivering projects. Why? Because there is so much complexity. And as we say locally, two heads are what? Better than one. Except somebody says that two right heads are better than one. If you have so, several confused heads, it's terrible. <laughs> it's, then one is better. I agree with you. So the heads must be right. And if they are multiple, they do better. Are right, together? Yeah. So those are some of the skills that are very important. That as we either educate people or we educate ourselves, as I develop or I learn about my accounting and business management, I must also work to build these skills because they matter. All because the world is changing and the world of work is changing and people with great human skills are what employers are preferring because we are more or less taking for granted the technical skills. There are a lot of engineers in town. There are a lot of developers in town. There are a lot of them. So the distinction is the human skills, which are so very important. So a question I have here, are you developing the skills for the future? Are you developing your emotional intelligence capacity, your leadership, your communication, your problem solving abilities. We did a research and we asked people which skills are they building for the future? And 86% of them say they are developing their capacity to be adaptable, to be able to change, because change is so constant. It is said that the only constant thing in life is what? Is change. And it's true, it happens all the time. So adaptability. And then 85% said problem solving ability because it's so critical I mentioned. Um, collaboration, team skill, diversity, project based approach to work. So team collaborative skills become very critical to ensuring that the complex problems that come to the workplace or the home are able to address them. And then 74% said they are developing their creativity. 76 say they are developing their emotional intelligence skills. And I have leadership skills about 69, and entrepreneurial skills, 50% said they are developing that. All these are what we call the skills for the future. And whilst you learn your accounting, let me say again, you have to build this as well. I said, the discussion from the leaders was to focus on the millennials. And if you look at the literature, it is so interesting that all the skills that I've talked about, 
those young people, the millennials, have a lot of potential for these things. They are very versatile, doing a lot of things at a time, very creative. So actually, there's a good news. Though there is less emphasis on the technical skills and so much emphasis on the soft skills, the good news is that those who are yet to enter or who are just entering the work environment have a lot of potential and interest in these areas. What are some of the things that the millennials are very interested in? They want to use technology. So if you are an employer and all you have for them is laptop on their table, they'll spend a lot of the time on their phone. So what do you do? They'll be WhatsApping in the office, though they are colleagues. What do you do? In a lot of offices now, they have social media platforms. So using the office technology, you can also do your WhatsApp. And quite a number of companies are using Google now, Google email, Gmail. So you, ha you can hang out. You don't have to move and use your phone to be able to talk to your colleague. You can actually talk to your colleague just using the hangout that Google you know, put across. When it in the office, it's so much important that you monitor the performance of the staff. And you also want them to be able to ask you questions wherever they are, whether in the office or outside the office when they are working. You want them to be able to give you timely feedback as to what is going on, what is not going on. So a lot of organizations now have apps for their performance feedback so that even when I'm home, I can reach out to my boss and say that, oh, you have assigned me this work yesterday. I've been able to do it. This is the result. And he can assess it instantly and give me prompt feedback without being in the office, just using my phone. Your phone has your email there. So they want to be able to do that. And that is one advantage that if employers I believe some of us will be employers. We should be able to create an environment that is technologically enabled so that the people we bring in, who are the young people, they don't struggle to work. And they work, they play to their, our, our advantage. They want a lot of flexibility. So what are people, employers doing now? Flexibility in terms of where they sit to work. So in some offices now, you can actually carry your laptop and go to a meeting room, carry a laptop and go to a working area and be working. You don't have to be at your desk. You can be at home and you are working. They actually want to be home and work so they don't have to go through the traffic and come to the office in the morning. So flexi working, remote working. So as employers, we need to be able to put this in place. So I'm saying employers are preparing to have and welcome and make the millennials enjoy their work. They love technology, we are responding. They love flexibility, we give them means to work remotely. But while they do that, the employers must also have a system in place to monitor them. So that when you are, you are saying that, oh, you want to work remotely at home or whatever it is, I'm able to monitor you. What I've given you, you are doing it. We have diversity now. We have a lot of women, ladies moving and working. We should be able to structure work such that they can work from anywhere. If a young, a baby mother, they have to come to the office. Can be home and work the same and be t able to take care of the child whilst working and delivering for me. So we are all benefiting. You see, these are all things that are happening in the workplace welcome the millennials, create opportunities. Millennials are also very keen in not just working for you as an employer or for themselves. They want to have impact on the society. So you see that a lot of organizations are now talking about corporate social responsibilities. Actually, now, when people come to interview and ask them, do you have any question for us? They can ask you, 
apart from what you do as a professional services firm or as a bank, how are you interacting with the society? How are, we, how are you investing back into the society? Because they want meaning beyond the one plus one or the accounting they do in their office. Are we together? So socially responsible organizations, millennials prefer to work for them. The angry gold of this world, the Ashanti gold, the gold fields, the tallow and all of those people, because of the impacts on the environment, they must take care of the environment. I, about 10 years ago, when I started working, before that, I was saying that if I were the president, I'll ask that we stop gold mining. Because as a nation, what benefits meaningfully have we gained from the gold we've mined for several years? Oil has started. There is a policy of local content such that when such people, the, the, those working in the energy sector and all of that, oil and gas company, to develop the locals to be able to, after five years or 10 years, take over the key roles. But how many do we see effectively do that? All because as a nation, though we have the local content law, the monitoring is difficult for us. So they can come, you make the money, but how much of the money do we get? So it becomes very important that they are socially responsible as organizations, take care of the environment at least. And millennials love to see that. And um, I talked about teamwork, and they want their voices heard. Even young people now in the house, as a ch your children, you can't just be telling, 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 commanding, commanding, commanding. They expect that you talk to them in a very friendly, true motherly, true fatherly manner. When you want to buy them a particular shoe or dress or toy, they'll say, Daddy, I want this one. They don't want you to just go pick and give to them. And that drives a lot of people. They want to be considered. So in the offices, organizations have found ways of ensuring that using technology, get quick feedback from the people, pick their thoughts, organize quick surveys, five minute surveys to find out how are we doing? What can we improve? And when you take that feedback, they expect that you include it actually in how you assign work, how you design work, how you composite them. They are very interested in being heard, not being commanded around. So I talked about the impact that the various mega trends are having within the work environment. I talked about based on that and in response to uh, those impacts, what are employers looking for in the people they want to employ? And I talked about the millennial because that's what I've been asked to talk about. I talked about the fact that the sort of thing that the employers are looking for now, actually there's a good match between that and what the preference of the millennials. So as an employer or as an employee, how we develop our skills in those respects. So I have a question here. With all this impact, what should we be telling? One, people who are preparing to enter the place of work. Millennials, the I generation. What advice should we be providing to our children in, this, in terms of career selection, work environment, what hobbies they must engage in. I asked this question, and from some research we did, we asked, what must we be telling our people, our young people? It says that we should tell them, one, to stay ahead. You need to focus 
on your ability to continuously adapt, to stay ahead. You must be able to hone your ability to continuously adapt, continuously make the change, learn and learn and relearn. You must be able to engage with others in the process of learning, relearning, and adapting. So that is the interpersonal aspect of things, so, so important. We should also tell them that to retain their core sense of identity and value. When we are making money, we shouldn't just go make money, but money that have positive impact on the environment, money that has positive impact on the people that you are making the money from, shouldn't just be driving and focusing on making the money by fair or foul means. Maintain your identity because there is so much happening around. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know where you want to go, there are a lot of things that can drive you anywhere. Maintain your sense of identity. Maintain your sense of value. And for students, it's not just about acquiring knowledge, but about how to learn. It's not just getting the knowledge, but how to effectively get the knowledge. Because when you step out of the classroom, actually the learning begins. We should also tell them that that is for the rest of us, apart from the student. We should remember that intellectual complacency is not our friend. And that learning, not just new things, but new ways of thinking, is a critical life skill. Learning is important, but new ways of learning, how to learn, is very important. What else should we tell them? For individuals, that is actual human beings, they put it, what do we need to do to thrive and prosper in whatever the new world brings? That is the new world of work. What should we do as human to prosper? The secret for a bright future seems to lie in flexibility and in the ability to reinvent ourselves. Flexibility and ability to reinvent ourselves. If you believe that the future lies in STEM skill, that is science, technology, mathematics, and all of that, and that interests you, you've got to train for that. But whilst you train for that, be prepared to rethink if the world doesn't need so many programmers. Maybe science, technology is important, but which of those technological skills would be very important? If you are a great accountant who has prospered by building strong client relationships, think how you can apply the, that capability without necessarily having to be an accountant. Think about yourself as a bundle of skills and capabilities, not a defined role or professional. What we are saying is that you need more than just accounting skills or engineering skills to pro prosper in the new world of work. Multiple skills become very important. What else might we be telling people? They, we must take greater responsibility for acquiring and continuously updating skills for progression in our careers. Personal responsibility. You see, there's so much stress and pressure on organizations to build skills to respond to all the environmental and world changes. So in as much as they would have loved to invest and build the capacities for you, they have other things 
that they would love their money to be directed towards. So as individuals in the office and the workplace about to enter, we have to take personal responsibility for our own learning. And we've got to focus, let me say that again, in developing skills that are required for the future of work, i.e. resilience, adaptability, ability to solve problems, emotional intelligence, communication, and all the soft skills you can think about. Because there are a lot of accountants, but we need accountants with heart. More important to employers now. One of the reasons that is very important is that if you are a good accountant and you are smart, we can actually use technology to steal our money. So we are so keen that we must have the value so that even if there are loopholes, use the technology to our advantage, not to steal. What are some of the options for the job seeking? A lot of ways now that we can look for jobs. Internet is there. But one sure way of being able to easily enter the job market is through internships. Because organizations are willing to have people to do interns because, because people are smart and we can use their skills to do a lot of things. If you are just coming to do internship, I don't have to pay you too much in terms of money, but I'll be able to utilize you. And if you come in as an intern and you show your worth, that you have the right drive, the emotional intelligence and all of that, when I'm employing, I don't have to go and advertise. I'll reach out to you first. So internships are good ways to easily get into the job market. Another way of doing that is whilst in school, let's build our extracurricular skills. If you are a member of a church, a member of a professional association, you are volunteer to do things. And as we do that, we build those skills that are so important. Let's utilize the opportunities we have. Let's take advantage of some of these seminars, job fairs that come around, because we hear things. I believe the 30 minutes or so that I have spent here talking, you may pick one or two things. OK? One or two things, which is useful, that you can utilize. That is where I'll end it. But let me just end with this statement. Technological or robotized workforce will be the biggest impact when it comes to technology in the place of work. But the human work will always be a unique and a determining factor in any organization. And as much as we use technology, humans will never extend from the place of work. And if we build the human skills, we have better chances of progressing. Thank you.